issues uh, with uh, the browser and the computer. Uh, but anyway, I'm here now, and um, I think I'd like to begin today's session. Uh, I'm just going to gather myself, my thoughts. Well, Paint with Mesma, as you know, is a weekly session where I open up my studio to uh, guests. I share my ideas, ongoing projects, and um, some of my uh, thoughts on artists, artists' lives, uh, quotations, um, inspiring ideas from other artists, and such things. So today, I want to dedicate uh, this month of Paint with Mesma sessions to artists who come from the LGBTQ spectrum and who have inspired me in my in my process in my um, time here <laughs> uh, creating and performing and painting and let me just clarify by saying that I am inspired by them because of their work because of what they do uh, they just happen to be from the LGBTQ spectrum or they either identify themselves as such or they have um, expressed themselves in that way along the, you know, along their process, along their, in, in their lives. So today, uh, I would like to talk to you about one such artist, an Indian woman who has been a great inspiration from, for me since I was a child and more so when I went to uh, the College of Art in Delhi to study there. And that woman is known as Amrita Shergil. Amrita Shergil was a highly and is a highly influential figure in the modern art world in India and the world, I think. But most importantly, she is considered to be the mother of <laughs> Indian modern art. What we mean by modern is art that has um, uh, been created in India in the 20th century and onwards, particularly painting. Why painting? Because painting was the most prominent um, expression in the 20th, early 20th century until maybe, well, all the way to the end of the 20th century, I would say. And Amrita Shergil, being a woman, uh, also had, well, she was a daughter of a sick man and a Hungarian woman. So she, she was half Indian. Her father, Umrao Singh, was a photographer, a very good photographer. And a lot of those beautiful photographs of Amrita uh, that we see today are uh, thanks to her father's incredible photography uh, I mean, she was extremely photogenic uh, woman. And um, her mother was uh, an opera singer, Marie Antoinette, <laughs> not the French Marie Antoinette, but her mother's name happens to be Marie Antoinette. And uh, uh, she spent time in Simla, in India and Europe, in Hungary and in Paris, I believe. So anyway, her time was divided between um, living and working, learning in India and working in Paris. Now we have to understand that Paris was the center for artists, for, for avant-garde art at that time. And we are talking the 
time period between the two world wars. Yeah, Amrita Sherbil was born in 1913. And after her initial education, uh, she wanted to be an artist. She was a rebel. <laughs> Uh, when she was put in a Catholic missionary school, she said she was an atheist and they expelled her from the school. Nobody liked that. And, and she had her mind, had a mind of her own. When her mother took her to Europe, she rebe rebelled and said, I want to go back to India. Uh, I want to be there because in her early days, she was in school in Florence. And as you know, Florence, Italy uh, was a great center for painters. Uh, it still is, but, you know, it, it has been a, a great center for artists, particularly, you know, all those great Italian painters uh, who came from Florence, Botticelli or Da Vinci, uh, who worked there, even if they were not from Florence, they had patronage there and they and they worked over there. So she, Amrita had a very um, uh, comfortable, very privileged childhood. Her upbringing was in an environment that nourished, that valued her art, her passions. And she was very lucky to have all of that. Uh, and when she went to Paris, uh, she studied at uh, L'Ecole des Beaux-Arts. Uh, sorry, I'm going all over the place with chronology because I'm not good at linear time. <laughs> My brain will go uh, non-linearly. Non -linearly. Uh, so you just have to bear with me <laughs> because I can't go in 1913 then 15 then 16. I can't go like that. I have a very different kind of a brain. So when she went to uh, Le Col uh, de Beaux-Arts uh, in, pa in Paris, uh, she was, you know, taken by the whole Parisian, um, how do you call it, the, the revolution in art because Braque was creating at that time. Matisse was creating at that time. Picasso was upcoming at that time. When all this unrest of the world after World War I, you know, the existential questions of who are we as people, as, as a world, and, and what does human life mean, uh, what is of value, and the, the spiritual crisis, if you will, of the European world, in fact, the entire world, um, uh, it was a time of great upheaval and Amrita found herself creating in this environment and experimenting uh, with her medium, with her paint and with her sexuality as well. So nowhere it is written that Amrita or expressed explicitly um, that she was only interested in women. She experimented as most artists did. Um, she was free spirited. She was a rebel. So if you, you know, to a rebel, if you, but, but rebel with her cause, not without a cause. Uh, she was an independent spirit. I think she wasn't against or for anything. She wanted to live her life the way she thought fit. And if anybody told her to do things their way, she would uh, object to that and say, no, I have my own way of doing things. Uh, so much so that she uh, also told her mother that, look, um, you know, when um, her mother found out that she was having um, a relationship with a woman, she objected and, and Amrita denied it. And she said, well, I will have a relationship with a woman when I'm ready for it. Anyway, there's a lot of hearsay and I'm not here to gossip about her. What I'm trying to say is that her creativity, her oeuvre of, of, of uh, the entire repertory that she created throbs with this vital um, free-spiritedness. And I'll give you an example. 
um, I have some images of Amrita's work. By the way, this is Amrita Shergil, a beautiful um, portrait of Amrita by her father uh, in you know, photograph, as you can see. So I love, I love this image of Amrita. I think it, it is so telling of, um, of her uh, poise, her grace, her beauty, of course, but also the silent volcano that, uh, <laughs> that uh, waits inside of her, Vol volcano of creativity, not a destructive one. And um, this is another photograph of Amrita, which I think is stunning. Well, she's a st stunning woman. Uh, but, you know, here is a self-portrait that she did while she was in Paris. So you can see the, the um, influence of, say, Cezanne in her work, because Cezanne had, in, had influenced a lot of artists back then, especially uh, the Parisian artists. So you see that over here. Then um, this is a portrait that she did of her cousin, uh, Sumer, in 1936. So she must have been, what, 13, 13 years old. No, sorry, 23 years old um, when she, she made this portrait. <clears throat> Over time, what happened was that Amrita um, developed her own relationships with people and she had a unique way of expressing herself in her idiom. And um, she was, of course, I think she was influenced greatly by uh, Gauguin, by Paul Gauguin, because you see the kind of use of color and composition in her paintings, like this one, you know, uh, this she painted when she came to India, and she was quite blown away by the um, by the Ajanta paintings and the Kerala murals that she saw, because she said uh, she said something like um, one Ajanta fresco is worth all the Christian art in <laughs> Europe. Um, in the European tradition. Also, there is a very funny, not a funny, but I think a very bold uh, quote by Amrita that when she realized that Europe was not the place for her, that she belonged to, uh, she, she needed to work in India. She wanted to go back to India because that's where her inspirations lied. Lay, sorry. And she was um, extremely uh, uh, passionate about coming back to India and working there and creating her own uh, language in painting. And she's known to have said that uh, Europe belongs to, I'm quoting her, Europe belongs to Picasso, Matisse, and Barak, but India only belongs to me, <laughs> unquote. So I think that's a very beautiful way of um, claiming your own identity as an Indian woman of uh, a new world where she is uh, going to say goodbye to the established ideas of who gets to decide uh, who is the master, you know? And there she, ha there she frees herself from those conventions uh, of, of uh, European art uh, history. And she says, no, I am I'm going to create my own uh, history and on my own terms. And that is why I like her. That is why I like her, her approach to it. And let me just say one more thing is that we see so many male artists in, in Europe because Europe has a great tradition of uh, painters 
but they are almost all of them, with barring a few exceptions like Marie Cassatt or Artemisa Jatileski, or um, there are a few couple of other artists uh, whom we hear about every now and then. But predominantly, it's a world, it's a man's world. And uh, there are there are artists who uh, are women who are very good or who were very good, excellent artists, but they never got to um, they never got the fame that they deserved because for whatever reasons, you couldn't even go to a salon and sketch from a new, nude uh, male model because that would have been very scandalous at that time. Anyway, so, you know, you have the father of modernism in, in your, uh, or the fathers of, <laughs> of uh, uh, say, cubism. You know, you have Braque, you have Picasso, um, and then you have uh, Gauguin and Van Gogh, and these are great artists, but they're all men. And however, the unique part about this is that in Indian um, contemporary art world, in the Indian contemporary art scene, you don't have a father of modern art, but you have a mother of modern art, who is Amrita Shergil. Even today, if you go to the National Gallery of Modern Art in India, in Delhi, um, you'll see beautiful Shergils. I mean, they are the ones who set the tone for what you are going to see there. And I think that this is a great uh, legacy of artists, uh, of Indian art, in Indian art, uh, of, an, of artists like Ambika Shergil, which is often not talked about. We don't often acknowledge how great that is, how great it is that the gender of that person is not of that much of importance here. Uh, because what she created was so uh, revolutionary for that time. And she was outspoken. She criticized the poor taste <laughs> of the then collectors. She, she was very um, uninhibited in her views, you know, as most artists are, uh, because that's just the way we are. <laughs> and... For, so I, I find that her, her style, her subject, her sensitivity towards women, uh, because when she came back to India, her entire style of painting changed from this very uh, Gauguin and uh, uh, Picasso didn't have that much of an effect. Although some of his, some, his blue period might have had an effect on her, but not the cubist, cubist Picasso. I don't see that. Um, effect or influence on her work. But I find that uh, she has been able to synthesize what a lot of modernists in India loved to be an Indian artist and have a, a, a worldview of your own and to, to contribute to that unique idiom of, uh, of, of being Indian. And that is what Amrita, um, I think she set the tone for that. And that is why she is such a great influence in the art world in India and elsewhere too. I don't know if um, Europe recognizes her as much as it ought to. I know that America doesn't even know about her. So we are very uh, far behind in that way over here. I live in New York uh, and I don't think New York, uh, which is, you know, now the center for the, for the art world in the, in the entire world. <laughs> it is the center. It used to be Paris, but I think that center has moved to New York. And even New York is unaware of a great artist like Amrita Shergil, except in some, um, you know, uh, some quarters. So anyway, so here we are. Um, this is another 
uh, beautiful painting by Amrita Shergill. And it is um, a very well known work by her. It's called, I think, The Bride's Toilet or something like that. Uh, here is a young woman. She is uh, being bedecked by her companions, by her attendants, to get ready for a, um, a uh, what do you call it, a wedding. So she is getting claimed and anointed and uh, beautified in a private chamber with only women as attendants. So this kind of an idiom, this kind of a tone of, of, of being sensitive to the life of the lives of women in independent India at that time. And then bringing your academic uh, knowledge of painting from a different continent and applying it in a way that when you create something, it, it becomes something completely new, something that we have not seen before. Uh, this speaks to the imagination of a great artist. And she was able to create that. Um, there's another one that I liked a lot and it is quite well known. And I hope I can find it. Uh, I don't know if I have, I don't think I saved it. Anyway, <clears throat> here's another one that uh, she had painted. And this is, you know, you see the colors, uh, a lot of reds, a lot of ochres, a lot of uh, deep browns, uh, very earthy tones. And this is the kind of palette that you see in, say, Ajanta paintings. Uh, the rock or, or the Sigiriya cave paintings in Sri Lanka, which is now in Sri Lanka. So this kind of a palette is, 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 is unique and it speaks for the, for the earth, for the sun, for the heat um, in that environment. And I think Amrita was able to uh, capture that on her canvases. But she had a great sensitivity Again, I keep repeating this word because there have been artists who have tried to portray women, portray Indian women in certain way. Uh, but few do it with the kind of sensitivity that Amrita could manage. Uh, now, as far as her sexuality is concerned, I think that she was adventurous. Uh, she was uninhibited and I think she was a very sensual woman. She did speak of her sensual eye often in her writings, in her letters, she says that. I think she was an extremely sensual woman and um, she was attractive. I bet people were extremely attracted to her and she being interested in people must have made herself available in that way. And why not? Uh, because she was a free person. She was a person of her own will. Yes, there's a price to pay for that. And as long as we know what that price is, it's all, it's all fine. But I don't know if she would label herself as anything. You know, in today's world, we are so interested in labels. We are interested in knowing who's what and we put them in boxes, but Amrita cannot be put in any box. I don't think so. Um, she was, yes, she was experimental and she had her own way of um, having relationships with people. And that is the kind of spirit that you, uh, that, that trickles into her canvases, into her canvas, into her art into the figures, into the sensuality with which she paints, um, whether it's men or it's women. So I don't want to comment on her personal life too much because a lot of it is hearsay, a lot of it is speculation, 
And um, to me, her work is the most attractive thing about her. Her contribution to the world of Indian art is the most fascinating uh, aspect. And why does Indian art? I think world art, because we don't have that many women artists in the world to celebrate or, the, or whom we know um, and whose work gets celebrated. So in that sense, I think Amrita is a great figure. She's a shining star as far as I'm concerned. And as far as many artists are concerned, I think. And um, anyway, so I wanted to bring up this painting in my studio that I've been working on for the past few months now. It's, it's, the, it's called The Three Muses. And um, I don't know if you can see properly, but there, I don't know if you can see it. Three Muses is a, you know, it's, it's a European theme where uh, you have these um, three women who are, I think, daughters of Zeus, I think so. And they are uh, the handmaidens of Aphrodite, who is the goddess of beauty. So they assist Aphrodite in creating the kind of beauty that she is capable of, of imparting to the world. So this is a um, canvas of the three women it reminds me of Amrita. That's why I'm showing this in today's session is because I think that subconsciously I have tried to capture um, Amrita Shergil and her sensuality in these women. It is not something that I've done consciously, but these things happen subconsciously and it is only after two months or so of making this painting that I have realized that there is something of Amrita in these women. And uh, I don't know what it is. Maybe you can tell me, you can type your uh, questions or comments in the comment box and tell me what it is or what it could be, what you think it might be. But for me, uh, Painting this was a great joy. It's not finished yet. And um, I'm going to put a few things in this session for today. And then uh, we'll continue our conversation. But it's a simple theme. There's nothing complicated about it. There are three sisters or three women uh, in a playful mood. So... I do like to have a lot of subtext to my work, to my paintings, but sometimes it's just nice to make a very simple painting that doesn't have too much of a, um, I don't know, complicatedness to it, complexity to it. Uh, of course, the technique is complex. It's not a quick technique. For those of you who have been attending my sessions, you know that I work in layers. I work in a lot of uh, paint, uh, one on top of the lead on top of the other. So you see the the uh, uh, that luminosity of oil colors in these paintings. So I'm going to start my work for today on this canvas. I'm going to. I'll continue working on some parts of this canvas. And in the meantime, if you have any questions, please type them in the comment box and I will be happy to answer them. Uh, this is Paint with Mesma. You're watching uh, a weekly thing that happens on a weekend. On Saturday mornings, I come here at 11 o'clock uh, to share my process, to share my creative ideas. Uh, and this month, I'm dedicating... Uh, paint with Mesma to artists of from the LGBTQ spectrum who have inspired me, who have um, influenced me, whom I, whom I admire, uh, whose work I admire, most importantly. 
So uh, there was one more thing that I wanted to say, and I'm forgetting now. Anyway, uh, it was about Hamrita Shergil, and I'm forgetting what it was. There was one more thing. However, please let me know if there are any artists that you think I should feature these sessions on, and uh, I'm happy to research them and do a presentation on them. But the idea for Paint with Mesma is to open my studio to everybody. Here I talk about art, artists' lives, um, quotes by artists, uh, people who have inspired me and who have guided me along the way. Um, they might be dead, but what they have said has been of great uh, um, support not support, uh, encouragement, they have lifted me up. So I hope to share some of that with you. And that is why I have created the series. So for today, I'm going to go back to my canvas and, um, and start working on it. And in about five minutes or so, I'm going to be back um, and I apologize for my hair today. I had washed it and I didn't have time to uh, dress it because I had my work on my mind today and I was just not, couldn't be bothered. So excuse my look today. It's not a very clean, refined look, but here you have it. I'm in my studio and creative process is messy and so am I. <laughs> so, uh, so there you have it. Anyway. So I'm going to get back to my canvas for a few minutes and then I'll be back to take questions if there are any questions in the meantime and um, in about yeah five minutes or so all right let us look into maybe some music Um, on the walls you see behind me are sketches. I, uh, I love to sketch. Drawing is very, very, very uh, dear to me. I love drawing. And I find it so relaxing. And at the same time, it helps me look at the world in a different way. It helps me look at the whole uh, world of forms of objects with new eyes, you know? And I try to do that every day if I can. Uh, otherwise, I find that the affairs of the world get in the way and they sap my creativity. Um, anyway, back to painting.
you know, when I'm painting, I'm not very good at uh, speaking on uh, while I'm doing my work. So you'll have to excuse me for my uh, disappearance. Maybe I should move the camera a little closer so you can see the work as well. Sorry if I'm blocking your view. If I don't get close to it, I can't see anything. So maybe I should move it this way. Thank you. 
Well, it's time for me to go. And this is all we have time for today. But um, thank you for those of you who came. And I don't see any questions, but that's okay. Uh, you can always send me a message later and ask me anything you want about my work or uh, any of the paintings that you have seen in these sessions. I'll be back next Saturday and hopefully I won't have any more technical issues uh, next time and that we'll be able to um, have another seamless, a seamless session. Uh, until next Saturday, I bid you farewell. Keep creating, be happy and happy Pride Month to you all. See you next next week, next weekend. Thanks.